The following program is brought to you by Total Theater Online. The views expressed do not necessarily represent those of the staff or management of WGBB. You're listening to the station that serves your community, 1240 WGBB. And now it's time for Dave's Gone By with David Lefkowitz. Well, there goes the neighborhood. Welcome, everybody, to the 110th edition of Dave's Gone By, an hour of music, talk radio, comedy, and more, airing every Thursday at 7 on AM 1240 WGBB in Freeport, New York, and live streaming on the web at AM 1240 WGBB.com. And, as we announced last week, live streaming reruns of older episodes, vintage episodes, you can't call them repeats. That euphemized the term. You call something a, re a rerun or a repeat, everybody's like, well, gosh, what's with the moldy oldies? Even if they never heard it the first time, they're like, well, why should I listen to something that isn't happening right here and now? As if this was some kind of news program or old newspaper. Which is why the words repeats and reruns have become verboten in the media. Instead, we use phrases like, an encore presentation, a classic episode, a vintage edition, your favorite episode, played again by popular demand. And let's face it, it's crucial in TV. If HBO, Cinemax, and Stars couldn't show the same movie 50 times in the same month, they wouldn't know what to do with themselves. They'd be rummaging for silent movies in the public domain just to fill airtime. Instead, you get the screen crawl. If you missed Rob Schneider in The Hot Chick, we will air it again at 3 a.m., 2 p.m. tomorrow, and midnight January 19th. Be cool if we could use those terms for other things besides TV shows. Instead of leftovers, we open the fridge and have an encore presentation of yesterday's dinner. Last night's meatloaf is tonight's vintage cow deja vu. At the office... Hey, uh, Bob, thanks for running those numbers for the presentation yesterday, but uh, the client still isn't biting. Could you do a classic return overview of the same graphs and have them to me by noon? But hey, there's also something nice and comforting about reruns. Seinfeld may have been a strange, edgy comedy during its first run, but now you turn it on at 11 o'clock at night, and it feels like a part of New York. You know, we lost the Twin Towers, but Central Park is still there, Broadway's there, Greenwich Village is still there, or as I like to call it, NYU is there, and Seinfeld is there. New York survives. Same feeling you get from the late night return of The Odd Couple. And what does Channel 11 show on New Year's? Honeymooners and Twilight Zone. I mean, there's nothing comforting about a good Twilight Zone, but it's still a way of saying... This was television so good, it's worth starting the new year by immersing yourself in it. And the honeymooners are people you want to hang with, even if they're basically dysfunctional and angry people. And you've seen the best episodes enough times to quote them back at the screen. Now, I'm not putting Days Gone By in that category, but maybe if you haven't caught every episode of the show, or maybe there were some episodes you enjoyed and wouldn't mind hearing again, especially if we had a musical guest or a skit you found really funny. Until now, basically, you heard this show at 7, and that was it. Sometimes WGBB would repeat the program over the weekend, sorry, not repeat, re audioize and that was really nice, but they don't have a place on the schedule for a regular slot. They're always letting me do uh, a second show now, Filler Up. It's a music program that airs at 9, so I'm not complaining. But it is frustrating that I put so much effort and joy into Dave's Gone By, and it plays once on the air and on the net, and it's done. Now, granted, a whole collection of Dave's Gone By episodes have been put on CD. You can buy a copy, complete with jewel case, track listings, nice cover, the whole schmear for 14 bucks. And we're still plowing through the early archives to get those on disc. But every single episode from 2004, episodes 59 through 109, they're all on CD. Buying them supports the show and allows you to visit the neighborhood whenever you please. The information is on the website, davesgoneby.com. And the site also lists what was on all those episodes, so you know what aired when, davesgoneby.com. But okay, 
The show has done 109 episodes and counting, so it gets a bit expensive to buy them all. And there ought to be another way for people to listen to what we do here each week, especially if you just came across the show recently and you're curious what we sounded like a year ago, two years ago. Well, your prayers have been answered. Well, actually, they're my prayers, but if this were an ashram and my prayers were your prayers, then they'd be mutual prayers and we'd both be happy because they've been answered. Vintage, classic, favorite episodes of Dave's Gone By can now be heard on DFSX Radio. Now, let me tell you about DFSX. It's a station on live365.com. I don't think that um, I've mentioned them before. Uh, we've all heard about satellite radio, but there's been much less buzz about cable radio. I don't know why people aren't making more of this or being more excited that it's there. It's generally free and gives you more options than regular dial. I mean, I've done my spiel about how we've lived through a golden age of radio in the late 1990s and missed it because we were so busy bitching about media conglomerates and clear channel and bad commercial radio. Meanwhile, the internet was allowing listeners to pull in stations from across the globe, not to mention being able to listen to some of your favorite stations while at the computer. If you were, were in an office with cinder block walls and couldn't get FM reception, suddenly you could surf on over to NPR or FUV or FMU, and there they were, clear as day. And just by making all these stations available, not just to listeners in a 50-mile radius, but in a 5,000-mile radius, the Internet was blazing new trails, forging an international listenership. I swear, George Bush thought it was so important to rush into Iraq and spread our version of democracy there. Forget the bombs, the shock and awe. All George had to do was airlift computers and iPods. Twenty years, Baghdad and Mosul would be just like Prague, kicking out the bad guys with nary a, sh a gunshot. Saddam would have gotten old, his kids would have been too wild and corrupt to hold power, and a new generation would have grown up in the Middle East hearing these radio stations from the West. Jazz from the colleges, hip-hop from urban contemporary stations, art pop from Japan, left-wing news from BAI, and right-wing BS from Rush Limbaugh. And to be fair, a typical top 40 station may sound like crap to us, the bane of quality American radio. But to a kid who's heard nothing but prayers and Islamic hymns all his life, R. Kelly and Britney Spears are going to sound like the apocalypse here and now. And for Americans, what a smorgasbord, what a fulfillment of the Internet's dream of providing full access and nearly infinite choice when it came to information and entertainment. Some 12-year-old growing up in Texas who, God forbid, doesn't like country music or Christian gospel, now he had a way to discover Delta Blues or Dr. Demento or Cabaret Standards or 70s Funk. The world was simultaneously expanding its options while shrinking the distance between cities and provinces and countries and age gaps and social class levels. And from a purely economic standpoint, the Internet was laying these golden eggs of music and talk all across the globe. And then ASCAP and BMI and the record labels started getting greedy and stupid. And instead of seeing the value of having more people be able to hear more music in more ways, instead of understanding that, okay, people are listening for free, but if an artist gets airplay on a radio station with 30,000 listeners, a.k.a. 30,000 potential record buyers, having that artist be accessible to 30 million listeners kind of broadens the reach, don't you think? No. The suits wanted to kill the Golden Goose. They wanted to extract every possible penny from what they saw as deep-pocketed radio owners. Only, there are a handful of deep-pocketed media mega companies, and the remainder barely scratch out a living like the rest of us. So, one by one, all these hundreds of stations that used to webcast started shutting down. They stayed on the radio, 
the goodbye live stream, or the cost of internet bandwidth became such that 20 people could listen to a webcast at the same time. But the 21st was out of luck. How short-sighted, how foolish. And yet, there are still stations that web stream for free, like this one. And there are still very cool options that are either free or bundled into whatever service, uh, whatever search engine you're using. AOL has a music thing. There's Yahoo Launch and Live365.com, which has been around for a couple of years now. And it's like having an entire new band of radio stations to choose from. Live365.com. Now, this is not a commercial. I'm not shilling for them. I'm just alerting you, if you didn't know, that most of these stations are no charge. You don't have to pay anything. They do have commercials and annoying promos and pop-ups on the screen. So if you want those to go away, pay a subscription fee. That eliminates the ads, and apparently the sound quality gets a boost as well. But again, you don't have to pay. And compared to the amount of ads on regular broadcast TV and radio, even the free webcasts are pretty restrained. So if you have decent audio through your computer, give Live365.com a browse, and then search for the station dfsxradio.com. You can either search it by name or just skim the stations under comedy. And you will find that every Thursday night at 8 o'clock Eastern Time, DFSX Radio airs a golden oldie, a greatest hit, a Dave's Gone By revisit from weeks and months past. Don't call it a repeat. In fact, the station owner, David Tanny, dubbed the time slot the best of Dave's Gone By. And who am I to argue? So at last, Dave's Gone By has another home in the media landscape. So you know, I get a lot of people telling me, look, I'd love to listen to your show, but at 7 o'clock I'm just sitting down to have dinner. Or if they're not on the East Coast, they're in the middle of commuting. Or folks in New York are off to the theater or dinner with friends on Thursday nights. Now, at least, if you miss the new show at 7, you can hear an older show at 8 and 11. One of the coolest things about the FSX radio is that they're repeating the 8 o'clock show at 11. So, even if you're coming home from hairspray, even if you've just bid goodnight to your first date, even if you've made the lunches and laid out your clothes for work tomorrow, you can jump on the net and hear days gone by Thursdays from 11 to midnight. And I know it's a little confusing because I'm on WGBB, from 7 to 8, and then you have to go to DFSX Radio from 8 to 9, and then back to GBB at 9 o'clock to hear my other show, Fill Her Up, and then back to DFSX at 11. I realize that's a lot of Dave in one night, possibly too much without a prescription. But if you're up for it, the easiest way is just go to my website, davesgoneby.com. The links are all there. If you just click and go, davesgoneby.com. So tonight, the bygone Dave's Gone By, the historic Dave's Gone By, is from October 14, 2004, and it contains part two of my interview with Neil Innes, co-creator of The Ruddles, the wonderful Monty Python alumnus and singer-songwriter. He had their part one airing last week, and this is a nice long interview with music, Neil Innes, tonight at 8 on the best of Dave's Gone By on the web. Go to davesgoneby.com and listen there. But don't leave yet, because I haven't even gotten to the coolness of this episode, this brand new January 13th, 2005 edition of Dave's Gone By, with another unique and fun musician. His name is Jeffrey Tozer, and he lives on the West Coast, but he resides in a place called Swanktown. That's where he and his band, the Swank Pharaohs, do their high living in low places, with an array of fictional characters that might even give Tom Waits pause. And the jazzy, funky, poppy, groovy sound of Jeff Tozer is hard to pinpoint. One minute you hear elements of Rat Pack era Sinatra, the next it's more Boz Skaggs or Van Morrison, and the next you might think of everything from Luther Vandross to the Red Clay Ramblers. And if you don't know where Swanktown is on the map, well, through the magic of radio, we're going to transport it right here to Long Island for the next 40 minutes or so. South Shore Swanktown. And don't worry, 
It won't cause a tsunami or anything. We'll put it right back when we're done. So pop on your sunglasses and your fedora, shake the crumbs off your velour smoking jacket, and inhale deeply days gone by. An hour of smart talk, silly talk, special talk, and music hosted by yours truly, Dave Lefkowitz, sponsored by Hewlett Minuteman Press and Total Theater, rated DGB-13, just in case the kiddies are too young to be playing in swank town after dark. And we shall begin easy swanking right after this. Oh, honey, you turn me on. I'm the radio. That's right, Joni. I turn you on all week long for a bunch of shows on WGBB, like Wednesday nights at 11 for psychic astrologer Joyce Keller, hosting radio's longest-running psychic advice show. She knew I'd say that. Thursday nights at 6, an hour before Dave's gone by, it's WGBB Tonight with Larry Davidson. And then, right after my show, Smooth Jazz, the instrumental invasion with Mike Shimeri at 8. Friday nights at 6, Bonnie D. Graham has advice about being single and singular on Long Island's dating. It's a madhouse. It's a zoo. It's Mikey and Jimmy, Saturday night. And then, on Sundays at 7, Joe Salzone offers conservative politics with a sense of humor and an open mind on your world. If you're driving into town, it's the dark of a funny Dial in AM 1240 WGBB for Joyce Keller, Wednesday nights at 11, Larry Davidson, Thursdays at 6, Yours truly at 7, Mike Shimeri Thursdays at 8, Bonnie D. Graham Fridays at 6, and Joe Salzone Sundays at 7. Call me at the station, the lights are up here. Do you know how easy and inexpensive it is to advertise on Dave's Gone By? You don't? Well, hey, it's even easier to find out. You can run a 30 or 60 second ad or sponsor one of the segments on this show or the whole show. Just go to our website, hometown.aol.com forward slash Dave's Gone By to see the rate sheet or call 516-295-1511. Bring your message to my audience. Advertise on Dave's Gone By. I've been telling you for months why you should use Hewlett Minuteman Press for all your copying and printing needs. But here's one of the owners, Mike Toron, to tell you why. Hi, how you doing? At Minuteman Press, our ultimate goal is service. We are your best source for the most complete line of printed products. You can check us out on the web at www.hewlett.minutemanpress.com. Dave's Gone By on AM 1240 WGBB in Freeport, New York, and live streaming on the web at am1240wgbb.com. And I have with me in the studio someone who's who's not 
from the neighborhood. He's from all the way on the other coast, not just California, but he, he lives in a very special and unusual place called Swank Town. And uh, if you've never been there, if you don't know what it is, well, you maybe can think a little bit of the Rat Pack or Sinatra or 1940s noir movies, but mm, I can't really explain it as well as this fellow can. His name is Jeffrey Tozer, and he's got a couple of CDs out, and he's going to tell us all about what it is to be in Swank Town. Hey, Jeffrey. Hey, Dave. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Good evening, cats and kittens. Good to yeah. see you all. <laughs> all right. Uh, do you even know where, where that phrase came from? Where when people started calling each other cool cats and jazz bow terms like that? Cool cats. Cool cats. Cool kitty. No, I don't know where it came from. I don't even know where cool came from. Yeah, actually. I know where In the Groove came from. Where did that come from? When they cut records. Oh, cool. When it was, it was an actual groove, when the needle was cutting through the wax and making a groove. It was in the groove. It was like in the music, right in the center of where things were happening. That, so. that, uh, I dig that. That's uh, I wonder what people say when there was an eight-track tapes. It's like, I mean, I'm in the fuzz. Like that little fuzzy <laughs> part where the thing had to pass over. Well, now, I'm in the fuzz tonight, yeah. <laughs> I'm in the fuzz. And now, and now they have to say, uh, I'm in the band. I'm in the broad band. I'm in the narrow band. The ditch. I'm, in the, I'm, I'm in doing the, the ditch. I'm doing the ditch. I'm yeah. digging, baby. <laughs> but what, what, is the, what is Swanktown? Give, give us a little taste of what... Swanktown. Swanktown. Swanktown is that incredibly small yet astonishingly peculiar part of your imagination where you can hear a little tiny voice that says everything is possible at any time. Anything could happen at any time. Okay. Swanktown, we like to say that you can talk to the dead, but you got to pick up the phone when they call. Okay. That's kind of our main, our main point. And um, so, this were, were you doing music before the the concept, the image of this sort of senior swanky thing came along? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I was um, I've been the lounge singer for many years. Mm -hmm. Started in New York and uh, moved to L.A. about 15 years ago, and then um, uh, kind of found my way into the cabaret scene. Mm -hmm. And so I've been singing in lounges uh, for a long time. And Swanktown is just a, a an idea that kind of came along. Over the last, I'd say, about two years, and of developing the characters and the stories and the songs, and so. And did you really realize that your voice fit the, this particular kind of singing, this particular style? Yeah, well, you know, I think it's I think it's developed over time. I think I've I've kind of like grown into it myself, and kind of tried to you know get down a little deeper into the fuzz, into the groove, and in that kind of swingy, swanky, swank music kind of vibe, you know. So if if. You do your own original compositions, mm -hmm. but if you were to define swank in terms of compositions people would know by other folks. I think the first lady of swank would be Lady is the Tramp. Uh, okay, lady sure. Lady is the Tramp, uh, Rogers and Hart. Uh, Johnny Mercer songs would be right, right down Main Street. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Cole Porter songs would be right down Main Street. Duke Ellington stuff. Um, little Warren Zevon, Little Elvis Costello, yep, that, uh, Debussy, that's, so Bach, your website, I just, Bette Midler. Okay. You kind of mix these all together and somehow you get this swank. It's kind Debussy of a jazz was blues the king thing. of swank, I think. Yeah. Debussy, he was <laughs> the precursor of swank. He did yeah. it. He did the cleanest swank there was. He did. He did and it. He, he cut new ground, you know. He, he went new places. So. As do you. I mean, you are sort of connected to that genre, but people shouldn't think that you're doing... Um, standard stuff necessarily in the vein of like a Harry Connick Jr. It's a little funkier, a little, um, you know, you know, the best way to, to show is for people to listen to a little more. This is a song that, um, I heard on your website. People can hear it and download it, um, that I like called Slow Kitty. And give us a sense of what you do, yeah. Yeah, Slow Kitty. Um, it's, uh, it's a song about, uh, one of the main characters at the Hotel Altonito where the whole Swangtown stories take place. And, um, we like to call her the slow kitty because she, well, she does everything real slow. And she's got this cat. She's oh. got a very close relationship with this cat. When she says me, the cat says ow. They're, <laughs> they're very, very close. When the, when the slow kitty looks at you, if she likes you, she gives you a, a look you could pour on a waffle. Ooh. Yeah, you want to know the slow kitty, believe me, everybody does. And so. That's, you know, everybody's in the mood for a little pussy cat now and then so <laughs> go Dave go let, let us meow now with Jeffrey Tozer meow <laughs> meow kitty yeah slow kitty sorry slow kitty.
From Jeffrey Tozer and, actually, I never mentioned the band, the Swank Pharaohs. Jeffrey Tozer and his Swank His, band. your Swank. They're not just the Swank. The, the drummer recommended that we say his instead of the. Okay. That was his idea. Yeah. Any musicians that we know, or, or these are Los Angeles folks? Uh, these are mostly Los Angeles folks. Uh, on that track, it was a drummer named Rob Brill, mm -hmm. and a bass player named Don Patterson. Um, I'm sorry, the bass player on that track was Al Gazam. Al, Al Gazam. Al Gazam. Oh, yeah, also, also known as Sheldon Gomberg. He's a he's a local LA guy. Yeah, only a Jewish guy would change his name to Al Gazam. The, right? the two of them together call themselves Cream Nut. I don't even want to go there. I <laughs> you really. Know what I'm <laughs> oh, by the way, speaking of speaking of getting people crossed in who's who, people should also know that when they're googling you, and if you've ever been googled, you know how painful that can be. You are not. There's another Jeffrey Tozer. I, I There's know. an Australian pianist, and it, it was completely freaking me out because I was taking all these notes. Yeah, yeah. And then I suddenly noticed that he's been performing for 40 years, and he's got like 25 records out doing yeah. Debussy and Mozart. Yeah, yeah. And then it turns out it's, it's not you at all. No, not me at all. And actually, 
she's much more successful than I am, and it's kind of kind of <laughs> kind of getting to me, and it confuses my mother quite a bit. So it's, yeah, she, yeah, she all, invites him home all for, all for Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I don't have a place at the table anymore. You know, he shows up. <laughs> have you ever met him? Have you ever been no, talked no. to him? No. No. Somebody ran across him listening to uh, some classical music on a on an airplane ride. Said, I didn't know you played WC. Right. Yeah. And I said, Well, I don't not much, but. In my early, in my first forty years in the business, I was mostly WC and uh, Did you, well, <laughs> Shostakovich, uh, well, yeah. Rachmaninoff. <laughs> and now you're Boz Skaggs meets Tim Harden, kind of. There you go. Uh, sure. Meets yeah. Warren Zevon. You was kind of like the Zevon in there, which is which is way cool. You got to get the tang in there. You got to get the twist. Was he the? Why, why was he such a big influence? Because you seem to make him a very prominent. Is he a continuation of that whole swank motif? I think it's just his sort of. Uh, weird take on things is very very idiosyncratic view and uh, uh, I just admired him so much as a as a songwriter you know someone who just rigidly held to the things the things he the way he saw the world mm -hmm. and that's to me that's sort of always the ideal of uh, how to how to present things is to say here's here's this point of view however However, you much may agree or disagree with it. It's just mine, and so boom, there you are. And I think he did that better than almost anybody. He just never, he just never got the feeling he was swayed by anything, but just saying, <laughs> well, "Here's the way I see it, twist it or not." <laughs> actually, he was swayed by alcohol for about ten well, years. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Have you been able to not? I mean, it's so obvious for a jazz musician or jazz pop musician in your vein to sort of go into the the real world of uh -huh. swank, which means like constant and endless. Binging and drinking, or are you oh, like yeah. vegan? No, no, not vegan. I'm a meat eater. I'm a meat eater and a scotch drinker, but uh, I drink a lot less scotch than I used to. I'm very happy to say. So, was um, it ever a problem? Problem, or was it just you got older and you're like, I don't need to drink so much anymore? I pretty much got older and said I didn't need to drink so much, and um, realized no way to sustain that pace anymore. So, right. you got to be much more intelligent about handling things. So, well, and, and speaking of sustaining a pace, and you were talking also about. Um, the quote-unquote more successful Jeffrey Tozer. Uh -huh. Can you, are you making a living as a musician doing what you do? And yeah. how? Yeah. I mean, from gigs or from the... And we'll talk about the CDs, of course, but but how? Yeah, well, actually, um, there's two ways. Uh, I've got songs of mine in movies, and I get a publishing income from that. What movie? What uh, films? Uh, well, as a movie came out about eight years ago called Car 54, Where Are You? Yeah, well, it was yeah. a remake of the TV show. Sure. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And um, I got some songs in that. I got some songs in some HBO movies. A movie called Sunset Heat, Dennis Hopper. Cool. A movie called Sensations with Eric Roberts. Okay, all right. You may or may not have heard of these. They're not uh, blockbuster successes, but let me tell you. Well, they, Sunset Heat did well. They keep playing like them this. around the world, yeah. and they keep sending me money. BMI mm -hmm. sends me a check, two checks every three months, and I'm like paying the rent with it, so it's... That is nice. That's a good thing. And um, my daily bread and butter comes from playing uh, uh, in clubs, you know, singing, uh, singing my original stuff and, and a lot of standards as well. I'm working at a place in Laguna Beach right now called Ooh. Laguna Hotel. Very nice. Which actually um, is, so, is sort of the inspiration for the Alto Nido Hotel. It's a very old school, built about 100 years ago in the middle of this uh, old town on the beach, mm -hmm. right on the sand. And uh, there are definitely some ghosts in the in the Laguna Hotel, like there are some ghosts in the Alto Nido Hotel as well. So, well, but I do a lot of lounge singing. That's that's my main thing. Private this time you hear a lot of private parties. Do you get to always do that persona, or do you sometimes have to be more Jeffrey Ross, kind of typical cabaret Mark Nadler? Sorry. Yeah, that's a good question. That's a really good question. It's actually a bit of a challenge to to be able to to do that persona, but um, I, I'm kind of. I've got it kind of working to the point now where I can pretty much do it at will, unless there's a, a a real specific request for this or that kind of thing. Otherwise, I do I do my stuff uh, my way, and I also do um, uh, you know when they're looking for looking for a lot of standards, I kind of do them in my own way. You know, right. um, I was just at the uh, at the cast party at Birdland last Monday, and and did a version of Ladies a Tramp that you know. It has a particular swank appeal. I like to think too. Okay, you know? yeah, yeah. Many people have said that to me, and I'd like to believe them. So, but um, no, that's a really good question because it's it's a challenge uh, when you don't have a hit to be able to to put your own DNA on the stuff that you do. And you know, I've been at this for a few years now, so I've kind of worked it into a place where I can do songs that people know in my way, in addition to my songs in 
in my swank way. So, Let, speaking of which, let's hear another of your swanky compositions. Which, All right. which, which one shall we hear uh, right now? You mentioned a couple that were. There's a little song called "Wouldn't That Be Nice." It's mm -hmm. actually uh, um, it's a song that kind of describes. Uh, well, it's a song about talking to dead people. Is what it is. Oh, and lovely. I don't know if anybody out there has ever talked to dead people. I know I have, and. Um, uh, it's it it, 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 it it's works into the story with the the I ghost, the ghost in the hotel. Well, <laughs> <laughs> like, move, move. <laughs> I'm sorry. There you go. <laughs> and it's called "Wouldn't That Be Nice?" And it's uh, if you listen carefully to the lyric, you get you get in the third verse, you get the payoff about what it means to be able to talk to people who are dead. So Jeffrey Tozer and his swank pharaohs being able to talk to the dead. Wouldn't that be nice?
Dave Lefkowitz is here for the play-by-play, the play-by-play-by-play by Dave and his book of plays, Marriage, Babies, and the End of the World, comedies, satirical, silly, sad, and strange, all collected in a great-looking book. Just $20 hardcover, $12 soft, 516-295-1511, or davesgoneby.com for marriage, babies, and the end of the world. Da-da-da-da-da-da! Play Dave! They say the neon lights are bright on Broadway, and you can see them shine off Broadway too. And if you love the theater scene, you need this special magazine. Performing Arts Insider is for you. Everything you want to know about theater, cabaret, opera, and dance. 516-295-1511 or go to totaltheater.com and click on Performing Arts Insider. What do the letters D, F, S, X stand for? They stand for Dave's Gone By, that's what, because DFSXRadio.com is rebroadcasting vintage episodes of Dave's Gone By every Thursday night at 8 and 11 Eastern Time. So, you hear me on GBB, and then listen to me on DFSXRadio.com every Thursday night at 8 and 11. It's all the Dave you can ever want, kind of. Wait, did he just say these are the Daves? He did. Van Morrison is singing about Daves Gone By and the CDs we have of the show. Dozens of complete episodes available on cassette and CD. $14 a piece for CDs, 12 for cassettes, and cheaper if you buy more. Go to davesgoneby.com and get these precious presents today. Hey everybody, cats and kittens, fellow travelers, ladies and gentlemen, one and all, this is Jeffrey Tozer coming to you from Dave's Gone By on WGBB Radio AM 1240 in Freeport. We are talking with Jeff Tozer and we've been listening to him and his swank pharaohs playing that very particular kind of funky old style American pop jazzy bluesy thing that, that is almost a unique thing to himself. But I do have to ask... Are there folks, I asked you maybe before about musical influences, what about the musicians and bands and artists that you listen to now, for <clears throat> both for fun and also to kind of get, since they're in the same genre, but also mm. way out of it? Um, man, I tell you, I, I listen to Johnny Cash. <laughs> Not very, not very contemporary, but yeah, not uh, anymore. Well, uh, he, he goes back with the song "Interesting About the Dead People." Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. We can talk, we can talk to Johnny if we need to. Um, no, I, I I must say I'm sort of rooted in. I mean, the 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 genesis of what I'm doing came from many many nights in in uh, piano bars playing standards, and you know you know it kind of grew from that, and then you know I I, I think I put it into. Uh, the the contemporary way that that it's done now, but I don't I, I I don't know who else is doing anything in that kind of a vein right now. So. Right, but I mean, in other words, um, you mentioned a little early like Elvis Costello, but he mm. tends to go into your vein. <laughs> well, he definitely <laughs> got more of that that phrase <laughs> that one, yeah, yeah, that vein. Um, well, he, I'm thinking he's got more of that pop yeah. twist of things. You know? But do you listen to any rock artists? Do you listen to any um, reggae or blues or? Um, Really not. I I, I, I I listen to everybody. I listen to Spanish radio on Sundays in L.A. Hmm. Um, just because I, I, I don't understand a word they're saying, but it just the, the energy and the rhythms just inform a lot of the stuff uh, that I'm doing. It's, um, it, it, it's... Okay. I don't know. I don't know where we can go with that, you know. All right. So. Well, then you can... There was a, I mean, if, if if there was a a bodega in Swanky Town, it was run by Ricky Ricardo. Okay. I mean, you can sort of say that it, it's in all right. That that's era. good. I like that. You yeah. Know, yeah, yeah. The hair Cuban a Pete, bit. he's out there banging yeah. his conga drum. Right. Cuban. Now these are these kinds of characters that you're talking about. Right. It, it goes even for you beyond music alone, because there, there's kind of this whole novel or a novella, or I'm not even sure what it is that you're blogging on your web. Well, just just tell the folks what it's all about. Well, it's the it's the ongoing stories of the characters 
um, in Swank Town, specifically uh, the regular habitués of the uh, Royal Palm Court, which is the piano bar at the Alto Nido Hotel. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm the guy playing the piano, singing the songs, talking about the characters in Swank Town. Uh, there's the mayor, Mr. Lucky, who uh, might be the luckiest person you ever met. Um, he he is so lucky. How lucky is he? Let me tell you how lucky he is. I'm glad you asked because when he drops a twenty dollar bill, mm -hmm. he bends down, he picks up a fifty dollar bill. Oh yeah, this That's guy's lucky. lucky. This yeah. guy's so lucky. If you're in the same room with him, good things start to happen to you. Oh. Yeah, this guy is so lucky. When he offers a lady a seat on the bus, yeah. she sits on his lap. Oh. Oh no, he's a lucky guy. That's lucky. This guy's so lucky. When he smiles, his teeth light up. That's lucky. And when he winks, it makes the phone ring, and it's good news. And it's for you. Yeah. You want to know Mr. Lucky. And we made him the mayor of Swanktown. There's Mr. Lucky. There's Dr. Peculiar. Okay. Who, can, uh, can I be him or is he already... You can be Dr. Peculiar. Thank you. Dr. Okay. Peculiar is pining away. He's got, a, he's got a permanent torch going for his old girlfriend who ah. left him the other, the other... Well, she left him quite some time ago. But ah. Dr. Peculiar is famous for mixing up uh, all his uh, original elixirs and potions to mend the broken heart. That's what he's a heart doctor who fixes broken hearts. And uh, he can fix everyone's broken heart but his own. Uh-huh. And that's Dr. Peculiar. And then there's the slow kitty that we talked about. Yes, indeed. There's Cosmo, the hotel poet. He oh. falls in love about once a day. Right. Yeah. He also runs the flower shop. Oh, wait. Does he fall in love with m boys or girls? No, oh, girls. Oh, okay. Probably. Just checking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and uh, there are, of course, the ghosts. There's Abigail and Maud and Lorenzo Fallujah, the Italian designer. Lorenzo Fallujah. Lorenzo <laughs> Fallujah. <laughs> yeah. He's very famous for designing the world's swankest tuxedo. That's a cool bag, Dad. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, thank you. He designed this tuxedo that's so swank, it not only makes dinner reservations, but it picks up the tab for you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, there we go. And uh, finally, there's the dog, Mika, who oh. sits at the foot of the piano. Doesn't say much, but her fur changes color depending on her mood. She wears an a, a emerald-encrusted uh, dog collar uh -huh. as a rule. And the thing about Mika is that she's uh, she knows the secret of life. Really? But she won't tell anybody. Uh, so, she's good to have around, but unfortunately, she won't tell you the nothing, secret of life. Not even a, a well, extra she, kibble? She, she told it to me once, but I forgot. Oh, no. So, yeah, yeah. I, I got the first couple of words. It's arf. <laughs> <laughs> arf, woof, arf. You know, but... Yeah, yeah. That was just preamble. Yeah. I was just like, feed me and I'll tell you more. I'm yeah. Like, oh, yeah, sorry. the tease, you know. Yeah. I know the secret of life. Forget <laughs> the fact that the dog can talk, you know. Right. <laughs> so, anyway. Anywho, these and other characters can be read about um, in the, sort of a journal blog that you can uh -huh. find. What is um, the website again? What is the URL? Uh, slycrooner.com. Slycrooner.com. Right. And um, and that is the website also where people can hear. Selections of your song. Yeah, the songs on the so MP3. The seconds no, 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 no. The whole boat. The whole boat. Yeah. yeah. Um, can people buy your CDs? Yes, they can buy the CDs at uh, cdbaby.com. Cool. To which there's a link uh, from the website. Right. You know? What are the names of your CDs, just so people know? Well, one is called uh, Jeffrey Tilzer and his Swank Pharaohs. Oh, gee, that's a creative title. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, and the other one is called Jeffrey Tilzer and his Swank Pharaohs 2. Your ki well, yeah. No, they're, they're actually called the red CD and the blue CD. Oh, that's and bad, yeah. The next one is going to be the yellow CD. At least they're not doing the Peter Gabriel thing, where he named his that? first eight albums Peter Gabriel. Ah. <laughs> and people still knew what the hell he was doing. <laughs> it's like, which album is that? Oh, it's on Peter Gabriel. He's very... Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. The early Peter Gabriel. <laughs> yeah. When it was really the good stuff, you know. True. Well, right. post-Genesis, though. Um... <laughs> I mean, and post Exodus, Leviticus, and Deuteronomy as well. We're talking, you know, We're talking 1970s, not, not late not, in the Old Testament. You know, oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anywho, where do you see yourself going with as a musician with um, the Swank Town and with the Pharaohs, ten, twenty, thirty years? Well, you know, I, 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 I just want to do what I'm doing, and more of it. You know, I want to work with other um, other singers and other uh, uh, other players in different different venues. I mean, I'm happy. I'm happy what I'm doing right now. I mm -hmm. just want to do more of it in a kind of a bigger way. So, I'm I'm not um, I'm not looking to change and, and do a different thing. I just want to keep working on this thing and keep doing it because I actually love what I do. You know, so uh, I'm, I want to do more of it. 
Well, we're going to hear Jeffrey Tozer and his Swank Pharaohs doing just a little bit more of it as, as we go out on drinking water from your hands. But uh, before we play that, of course, I want to thank him for swinging in, doffing his hat, and uh, and swanking in yeah, to the you. neighborhood at Davis Combine. Thank you, Jeffrey. I wish you best of luck with, with the music. And remember, everybody, slycrooner.com Crooner, to find out more about Jeffrey Tozer and the music that sounds like this. And everybody listening, there is a place you can go, dfsxradio.com, for another episode of Dave's Gone By, a vintage, classic, elegantly restored, and lovingly preserved episode. Just go to davesgoneby.com and click on the link for 8 p.m. and hear my interview with the delightful Neil Innes. Then I'm back here on WGBB at 9 for an hour of music on Filler Up, some incredible music in honor of Martin Luther King Day coming up in a couple of days. So get ready for an hour of Ray Charles, James Brown, Robert Johnson, Tracy Chapman, Ted Hawkins, Howlin' Wolf, Muddy Waters, Jimi Hendrix, just blast that radio 9 to 10. And don't forget, the Neil Innes interview is played once more at 11 Eastern Time at DFSX. It's easiest to use DavesGoneBy.com as the home base and go from there. And the website is also the place to find out how to support this show with advertising and sponsorship. And now that we're reaching so many more people, our cheap rates make an even bigger bargain. Plus, at the site, you can buy my book, Marriage, Babies, and the End of the World. You can buy my CDs, including this very program, episode number 110, just $14 shipping included. And before I end this program, let me be sure to include my thanks to you for listening. My gratitude to Hewlett Minuteman Press, the best copies under the sun, bar none, Total Theater's Performing Arts Insider Theater Magazine, sponsors of Inside Broadway, which we didn't have time for tonight, but uh, I hope we'll return next week. My thanks to Jeffrey Tozer, of course, to Program Director Tom Ross, to all of you for listening, and as always, to my swanky sweetheart, Joyce. Up next on WGBB is Mike Shimeri's Instrumental Invasion of Smooth Jazz, and coming up next week on Dave's Gone By, a non-musical guest, but someone who has known and hung out with the biggest musicians of our time. I'm talking Paul Simon. I'm talking the Rolling Stones. I'm talking Miles Davis, the Velvet Underground, Janis Joplin, Bobby Darin, the Birds. I'm talking Bob Dylan and the Beatles. And when they met for the first time, it was thanks to this man, rock journalist Al Aronowitz. He wrote for the New York Post, and he was there when it was all happening. Now he's gathered his writings into books and on the web, and he'll be bringing the juiciest stories to the neighborhood next Thursday, 7 p.m., January 20th, on Days Gone By. Until then, don't miss your days going by. Good night, swank you very much, and gone by. Baby, I'm strange for you. Twisted and tossed Baby, I'm strange for you Baby, I'm off Like a new pair of shoes Just a little